I am in Hunters Point Park in Long Island City, New York. It is absolutely beautiful and yes, that is the Empire State Building and Chrysler Building across the bay there. It is a glorious place. In this glorious place, we are going to talk about the enlightening and exciting topic of how to scam people. I'm kidding you not. I'm generally going to teach you how to scam, but not for the purpose of actually scamming but for the purpose of understanding when you're being scammed. I have been the potential victim of scams many, many times. In fact, since I have started a charity, the scam attempts actually went up. Yes, that's right. People try to rip off charities. Ooh, noisy dogs. Holy cow. Anyway, see, they don't like, those dogs don't like that you rip off charities. I right, believe it or not, uh, when you run a charity, you become a target of being ripped off. I don't even know why, but people do that. It's horrible. In fact, the pe let's start talking about who are these scammers. Let's do a quick discussion of that. People who scam have absolutely no ethics. Chances are they are clinically considered narcissists because anyone normal who's got any form of empathy probably wouldn't be able to try to scam a charity out of money, okay? Oh, that's pretty. So anyway, <laughs> hello. Hey. Hey. <laughs> okay, New York is awesome. Everyone's got to come out here. All right. So anyway, skip. Jet skis. Cool. This is exciting. All right. So anyway, um, now let's talk. Let's talk about what, how they actually get you. What is the way that scammers pick you to be the victim of the scam or potential victim? First thing is they look for people who are in positions of desperation. Number one, when you target someone for a scam, they always aim for someone in a position of desperation, someone who needs something so bad that they are not, they are not thinking clearly if this is even a, a good decision anymore. They just want to get it so bad. They want to believe the dream that you're going to solve all of their problems. They want to believe that. And by wanting to believe that so bad, that makes them really, really easy to scam. It's terrible. Never be in a position or try never to be in a position where you are so desperate for a solution that you will become this scam victim. What do I mean by that? Let's take a real world example, okay? I needed to hire someone to fill a role because someone else quit on me and didn't fulfill their role. Now, mind you, they quit on me because they sensed I was gonna can them anyway. Oh my God, it's loud noise. They sensed I was gonna can them anyway because they were underperforming. Now, I didn't manage to find the replacement quick enough and I was going to lose some opportunities and I expressed that. That was the sign to the scammer that I was in a desperate situation. I needed a solution. What did they solve? First of all, their solution was bigger than life. Like, it's too good. There's no freaking way that they were going to come through. It's too, too, uh, if it's uh, hard, too hard to believe, then it's probably not real. If they, there's no way that someone's going to work magic in that time window and deliver the things that they were claiming they can deliver. However, they have very persuasive things that they generally, um, pr they generally propose. They talk about contacts that they have that lets them do things better than anybody else. I can do this because I know XYZ person. BS! Unless you can verify those connections, and you never can, I'll get to that in a second, but unless you can verify those connections, assume they're fake. They do not have those connections. They cannot do more than anyone else can do. Chances are less. Chances are they have no references. In fact, most of the people who tried to scam me have no reasonable references. What do I mean by reasonable? They usually say they have clients that are so big that you can't verify them. Okay, if they say their client was Microsoft, IBM, Okay, Coca-Cola, you can't verify that. Who are you gonna call at Coca-Cola? Hi, is this guy, you, did you hire this guy? No, there's nobody to call, they know that. That's why they use those references. They never have a little mom and pop shop as their reference. They never say, I work for Joe, Joe Schmo on the corner, because then you can go ask Joe Schmo, did you really work for him? I'll say, hell no. Or he said, or he, maybe he did and he ripped you off. I don't know, but the point is they always have bigger than life references. That's a big red flag when there's no way to verify that they actually did anything other than them saying they did something. They always talk big too, okay? It's always, I could do this in six, six hours. What the six, the other guy three years, I'll do it in six hours. No, that's because you want to believe that because that solves your problem, but that's not real and they ain't going to deliver. 
All right, now let's talk about some other aspects. All right, why do you know that you're being scammed another way? Number one, no, not number one, I probably said a few already, but somewhere, number A, B, C, or D, okay? If they ask you for a retainer up front that's abnormal for the uh, role, sometimes they'll ask you for the entire money up front. I've had that, in fact, I had that yesterday, okay? Somebody literally who I never knew before, has no references, but claimed to be able to solve all the problems I'm currently solving, sent me an invoice for $9,000 up front. Yo, she bump ahead of something. She crazy. Who's gonna pay $9,000? You know who? That person who's desperate for a solution and that, and thinks that when she says she's giving you that solution, that she's really gonna deliver. Now, one of the other red flags, how I knew with absolute certainty that this was a scam attempt by this person was <clears throat> that she had also written in the agreement, the work agreement, not only do you have to prepay $9,000, the whole amount up front, so there's no way to get your money back if she doesn't deliver anything. She could literally go to sleep and never do a thing, and there's nothing you could do about it. She also wrote in the contract, which was a huge red flag, if there is any need for remedi legal remediation, it must be in her uh, jurisdiction of, get this, um, Beverly Hills, California. <laughs> she lives in Beverly Hills. She must be doing this to a lot of people. I live in New York City. Now think about that. Let's just say that was legally binding, which I'm not sure it is. But let's say it was legally binding. It means that if she steals 100% of the money, does nothing, I have to sue her in Beverly Hills. It means I gotta go fly out to Beverly Hills and, and, and go through a whole legal procession on another half of the country. That's gonna eat away at the, the likelihood that I'm gonna sue her for $9,000, okay? Now, $9,000 is a ton of money, but uh, she, she might settle for a lower amount and say, oh, well, you don't have to fly to Beverly Hills. I'll take only $6,000 or some crap like that. These people are despicable. They will do nothing. You can be absolutely guaranteed they will do nothing for you and claim they are working all the time. I have heard that so many times. I'm always working, I'm always working. There's never any deliverables, but you're always somehow working and that's the excuse why you uh, are do this money. It's BS. Okay, they aren't working, they ain't doing nothing when they say that stuff. It's a scam, all right? Learn to not be in a desperate situation. Now, the other ways to identify that something is a scam is if they're using tactics of scarcity, okay, and urgency. Now, mind you, those tactics are perfectly valid salesman's tactics. Someone who uses the urgency and scarcity as a tactic is not an indicator of a scam in itself but if you have all the other signs you can be sure you are going to see some urgency and scarcity in there what does that even mean uh, scarcity means if you don't do this now the opportunity will not be there for you later urgency means right now literally now don't have a chance to make a decision that's educated don't have a chance to analyze your thoughts just right now sign the paper or you will not have this opportunity urgency and scarcity now I repeat, there's nothing wrong with using those tactics for legitimate sales purposes. People do it all the time. It is not a sign of a scam to use, to use urgency and scarcity. However, you can guarantee if you are wondering if it's a scam, you will guarantee you see urgency and scarcity tactics used as part of it. God, this place is so beautiful. Holy cow. All right, now other aspects of scamming. How did, oh my God, I have to duck through the trees. How does this exactly work, okay? Now, they are going to pitch you with all the money up front because they know you're never gonna pay them any future payments because they have no intention of delivering. That's why you always have a big upfront payment when people are scamming you, okay? It's never like, you know, 5% down. It's usually like 50% down, or in this particular case of a person yesterday, it was literally 100% down with someone I've never worked with. I'm running a charity that's very easy to verify and validate that we are an established organization, especially because charities in the United States are fully transparent. You can see the finances of any charity. So I have no reason to have to prepay all the money up front. She had absolutely nothing to validate, to verify anything. I couldn't find one client she did before. 
at all, at all, because they were all too big. Coca-Cola and IBM, she didn't help Microsoft get out of here. You know, that's just a way to get out, get around the uh, requirement of actually giving a reference. So be aware when they ask for too much money up front. Be aware when they're taking advantage of your desperation, which you know you have at the moment. All right? Be aware that they're using tactics of scarcity and urgency to sell you. Be aware when they seem like unethical people. Once in a while, they will come up with a reference that's a buddy of theirs. And the funniest thing is usually the buddy is not the same narcissist that they are. And uh, I've found that when I call up the references, it's uh, hilariously uncomfortable because, hold on, I gotta duck under the trees here. <clears throat> it's hilariously uncomfortable because usually they're trying to cover up for their friend who clearly doesn't have any ethical, uh, any ethics whatsoever, and they do, and they feel guilty about it, and you can hear it in their voice. It's comical sometimes when that happens. Oh, look, a tugboat. Let's go that way. That's, can you see it? I guess you can. Now, keep in mind, it is completely normal to wonder if they really are going to deliver, because obviously you're in a situation where you're seeking that magical, that magical solution that simply does not exist. It's not a realistic solution. Uh, situation usually when they come to you like that okay if you're if they catch you in the desperation you want to believe they're gonna live through uh, what they're claiming but they never do just trust that your instinct that they cannot do what is clearly they have never done before because they have no references now another sign of scam tactics are when they give you some sort of emotional reason to lower the price or they throw some emotional crap in there about to people they never met before. Meaning, I never met this woman in my life. I had one phone call with her to discuss the project before I recognized she was a scammer. And she's saying, and she's, oh, she says something like, because I like you, I'm going to give this. Because I want to help you, I'm going to do this for you. And what they do is they usually start at an obscenely high amount of money to pretend that they have some kind of increased value of their services, when in reality, they, no one's paying them that money, okay? But they want to make it seem like they're getting paid big bucks. So they come up with these huge numbers, like, uh, you know, if the, if, the, if the going rate for something is $5,000, they'll come up with $20,000. But they like you, and because they like you and they wanna help you, I'll give it to you for only $12,000. This is the odd, the scam. And they all say the same thing. It's like they're reading a script. I don't know where they're learning this stuff, but I'm teaching it now. So you can know and you can identify it when it happens to you. Anyone who comes starts with a really high number and brings it down because they like you, but who likes you? They just called you on the phone for the first time. They don't know you from a hole in the wall. They don't want to help you. They want to help their wallets. They don't care if who they hurt in the process. These people are nasty, disgusting people, really. Anyone who would scam a charity is a disgusting person. She knew plenty well what my charity does stands for and how upright we do everything, okay? And she was ready to grab a whole lot of $9,000 money from us for no, just because she couldn't deliver and she couldn't just say no, I don't, an honest person would say no, this is not a realistic thing to do in this time frame, I cannot deliver that, but here's what I can do, and here's my pricing. And this is what I require down, something reasonable like 5% or 5%, 20% even, 100% down up front, get out of here! What a scam. But the best part was that she put into the clause that if there's any need for, reme for legal remediation, gotta be in Beverly Hills. I just said to myself when I read that, Yo, she'd been sued before. <laughs> There's no other person who would even put that in a contract. I've never seen such a thing, okay? She's clearly been sued before, and the reason she wants everything up front is because she knows she ain't getting nothing else, not a penny more, except maybe she's gonna have to fight you in court to get your money back, okay, when you try to get your money back. So don't fall for the scam. Now that you know how to scam, please don't scam. I, I'm just teaching you so you learn how not to be a victim of it, but the truth is, it's the same skills. And once you learn it, you don't gotta be a sucker. I, coming out of the greatest place in Long Island City, New York, this is just the most beautiful park in New York, in Long Island City here. It's so amazing. This used to be a factory where I'm standing right now. They really hooked this, hooked this joint up when they, uh, you know, made it into a park. It's really beautiful. All right, come on out here, Long Island City, Queens, New York. See you in the next video. If you like what I said, 
By all means, please do not scam. Please do share this with other people. If you don't like what I said, or you don't even agree with it, share it with someone who might like it and might agree with it, please. All right? All right, thank you all for watching. I appreciate the time you you call, you call spend watching my videos, because I know you don't get that time. Back time is the most valuable thing on this planet. No amount of money can replace it. So don't let some scammer steal your money or your time. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Yeah! <laughs>